Honestly, I totally didn't expect stuff like that in France, to be honest. I feel so reminded of Scotland and I don't know, it's just so beautiful. Interesting building technique. I don't know if you know yet, but I'm kind of a history freak. So I had a lot of history classes and I also thought about studying history and I'm just super interested in it. So I love places like this where you just imagine who lived here and why they left or if it got destroyed or yeah, why it looks as it looks now. And I'm always amazed that people, I don't know, many hundred years ago were able to build huge castles and beautiful things. So after six weeks we spent in Sulac sur Mer, we decided that it was time to hit the road again. So we left Sulac sur Mer and it feels really amazing to be on the road again and we're still sad to leave all of our friends behind and our now homey surroundings where we knew where we could find water and everything because now we have to discover everything um, again but yeah that's why we are on this journey because we want to travel so it's really great to discover and explore no new places And our plan is to drive to the Provence and instead of driving along the highways which we did on the way to Bordeaux and sulac sur mer we decided to drive through the central massive a mountain or hilly region in the central of south of France and we actually passed it on the when we first came to France but it was still the end of January and very cold and there was some snow on the mountains so at this time we decided to drive around it instead of driving through it and yeah but now it's very warm and sunny so we decided let's explore this region here there are great viewpoints and the scenery is really beautiful but driving up and down is a bit difficult with our van because it's quite old very heavy and the engine is not so powerful so going uphill we are doing like 30 or 40 kilometers per hour but going downhill is really fast. Then we're actually overtaking trucks. Tour de France. Climbing through these valleys, mountains, and the whole scenery is really beautiful, but also a bit overwhelming because everything changes so fast, but it's still very enjoyable. Along the way, we stopped at very random and diverse places for the nights, for example, wind yards, villages, lakes, or alongside rivers. Every time we discovered something that seemed interesting, we just stopped for exploring it. For example, little villages, as I said before, one of the most beautiful cities or villages was saint sur la poupie which is like a little village directly on a mountain and it looks really nice, like a film set or something. So it was very touristic and for that reason it was quite hard for us to find a parking spot, which was for free, so we decided to um, stop for the night a bit far away, sleep there and come back for just walking through the city and we were quite lucky because we went early in the morning so we had most of the village for ourselves. Next we were driving deep into the mountains along very small roads taking us around a million corners. No. But it was really nice to have a lot of viewpoints and nice scenery. Soon we reached the region of Ardèche, which is a very touristic area. There are a lot of things you can do, like hiking, kayaking, climbing. And it's not a very high mountain area, but a lot of hills and a lot of rivers carving those canyons through the hills. And yeah, this creates a beautiful landscape. So now we've driven all the way down from the mountains and now of back at what is it like 200 meters altitude 
and it's already a very different climate it's very warm and yeah I think yeah. that's super interesting and the architecture also changed a lot so yeah. up in the mountains it was like in Scotland with this old stone, stone villages castles. and everything yeah and now it's really more southern Europe and we also saw some wine fields again and not only yeah. cows and sheep so yeah it looks that's like Tuscany yeah super interesting how quickly these things change when you pass different yeah, mountains or sceneries or forests or whatever. All you need for your DIY plant press is a piece of square wood which you have to saw into two equal pieces. The size depends on how big you want your plant press to be. After that you drill four equal holes in each piece of wood. You can sand the wood to make everything pretty and avoid splinters. Now you only have to put everything together with four big screws and matching nuts. And that's basically it. You're supposed to press your plants with newspapers, but I didn't have some. I used normal paper instead. So, about mm. one week later, or a few days, we don't really Four know. Four to five days. Ui! Wow! Yeah. That looks so cool. Uh. It looks like a drawing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Looks nice. I think it's not perfect because I uh, should have pressed that one earlier, for example, because it already turned brown and got dried out. But I'm very happy with the first one, this one. And it's the first try, so I can only improve. And what are you going to do with it now? Put it in a folder and <laughs> ah. write down which kind of flower these are or plants. And maybe, yeah, I don't know, make art with it, like some postcards or just be creative. Yeah. Nice. So this seems to be a very touristic area as it's <laughs> the parking lot is totally Packed. crowded. Yeah. And even at night there were some other campers here. Yeah, and we are kind of forgot that yesterday was a holiday, holiday yeah. and uh, today is Friday and then the weekend comes. so. Many people, Many people took time off or have time off and just came here. Going on a hike. Well, we said a little walk, so let's see how far we come, but we didn't really plan on going on a hike, so I'm not prepared. Wrong shoes, definitely. So one thing I really love about France and Southern Europe is that you can find wild herbs that are used in the Southern kitchen, like wild thyme. It smells amazing mm. so we just went to the supermarket but decided instead of going back back to the parking lot that we're gonna stay the night here I know it's directly close to the road but it's still super beautiful like here's a little path and over there is actually a hiking path starting that we might hike tomorrow and yeah it's just nice to be more alone even though some cars are sometimes passing but there is a curfew at seven so yeah we're just gonna enjoy being a bit more alone and being kind of on top of the mountain i mean i don't know if you can see it but it's still pretty <laughs> pretty and yeah we just enjoy being here enjoy the warm weather and now it's dinner time Ready to go hiking? Ready to go hiking. I even <laughs> put on my hiking boots. Okay. Vamos. Vamos.
great view and because it's so nice here we are going to stay here for a couple of days and explore the area and there's a lot to do i mean we're on a hiking route today and we might do some climbing and yeah it's just very beautiful and with the river and you can hang out and chill in nature even though the weather is not so great today but hopefully it will get better and yeah we will have a nice time here so in general this whole area is really cool so we've parked over here and walked along this yellow line and this is where we parked before and you can go directly to the river and there's a cliff where you can go climbing and well now we're here and we're going to check out these two caves it is a bit like in sweden or norway those hiking routes because there are also a lot of rocks here but this definitely has more like a jungle vibe or the moss a and jungle vibe is this the right way yes okay there are those yellow markers oi, oi, oi. Oi. Uh -huh. oh god very interesting route Very slippery. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this is creepy. Huh? Where did they come from? Oh my god. <laughs> this is exciting. It's a bit scary, but exciting and definitely not boring. Ooh. <laughs> I just got what I'm at. Yeah, and this guys is how it is without without the light. light. <laughs> so like super super dark. Okay, time to go back. Try to go back. Nothing for people who are claustrophobic. No. <laughs> this is so crazy. Now you can definitely get lost in here. Yeah, which way do we have to go? Straight. Right or left? Straight. There's no straight, there's only right or left? Always left. Left, okay. okay. Oh god. Yay! We didn't get lost. Now we just have to get out of here. Oh my god. Daylight. That was really cool. Yeah, really wild. <laughs> Never been a, a, like a tight cave like this, very small like without a guide i've done this with like someone who actually knows the whole cave and, ah. and like knows the route and, and routes and everything but like on my own was a bit scary but also very fun very much yeah. fun fun it was fun i know i repeat myself but it's just what i generally feel that it's just super cool and beautiful here and we didn't expect that so yeah just... so that's the next cave a little bit different also getting in here is a bit more difficult Yo -ho! Yo -ho! wow wow Yo <laughs> Oh, 
across the back. There it is. Well, that's a very nice cave, especially the view out of the cave. takes <laughs> what's happening here this woman just gave me her baby because she needed to pee <laughs> so beautiful it's super beautiful again so so beautiful so beautiful so beautiful